under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him, and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him, and shew him my salvation. Psalm 91 in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore 
will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. The Book of Psalms Psalm 35 A Psalm of David The Book of Psalms Psalm 35 A Psalm of David Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler, and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear, and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded, and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back, and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him? False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity they rejoiced, and gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not. With hypocritical mockers in feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace. But they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. This thou hast seen, O Lord, keep not silence. O Lord, be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, oh, so would we have it. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long.
Father, O God of my salvation, O King of kings and Lord of all lords, blessed be the name of the Lord forevermore, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah, the righteous Savior, the Holy One of Israel, the blessed King of all kings. And the blessed Lord of all Lord, glory and honor, wisdom and power unto you, O God. For truly, Lord God, thou art everlasting to everlasting. Thou art sovereign throughout the universe. Thou art my rose of Sharon. And thou art the lily of the valley. Mighty eternal God, El Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. I come unto you this morning, not worthy, but Father, simply to your cross I cling this morning, seeking for your mercy, seeking for your forgiveness, seeking for you to cleanse me and to wash me from all sin and shame, seeking for you, Almighty God, to cleanse me of all iniquity, my shortness, my shortcoming, my selfishness. Father, I pray that you will come now within me a new heart create. Renew a right spirit within me. Help me to be more like you, O God. Humble me under the mighty hands of God that all praise and glory will go unto you, O Father. Mighty God, as I come this morning, I pray that you'll wash me from all sin and shame and that, O oh Father, you will make me worthy, O oh Father, to call upon your name. Mighty God, you'll make me worthy to even minister unto your people. This morning, Father, remove all shame and guilt. Father, Lord, I pray that you'll um, envelop me in your arms. I pray, God, you'll wrap your arms around me. I pray, Father, you'll comfort my soul. I pray, God, that you'll give me peace and joy, even this time and forevermore. Thank you for your salvation of grace, of power, and of might. Father, I am glad that I'm a part of the family of God. I'm glad, Lord God, that you have saved my soul and you have made me whole. Father, Lord God, it doesn't matter, Lord, but I know that I'm a new creature in you. And all things are passed away and all things have become new, O oh God. And I know, Lord God, that thou art able, thou art able to keep me, Almighty oh God, even from falling. And thou art able to preserve me. This morning, Father, may you come and be in the midst of us, be in the midst of what I do. Father, may you cut and clear the way, Father. Remove everything that is unlike you, Almighty oh God. Every blockage, Lord, every obstacle, Mighty God, I pray, Father, that you'll go before me and you'll protect me from seen and unseen danger. Pray, God, that you'll clear the way, Father, that your word will go forth with power and might, with accuracy, Almighty God. Lord Jesus, lift up a standard against the enemy of my soul even now. And those that rise up against me, O oh Father, will be brought low, will be trampled on their feet, Lord God. They will come to repentance, mighty God, and that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord, O oh God. Remember your people this morning, O oh Father, as they come. I pray you will bless them. I pray, God, you will keep them. I pray, God, that you will touch them. Lord, may you heal their wounded, broken spirit, and may you save them by your grace. Those that are suffering right now, those that are afflicted, I pray to God that you'll be with them. Remember them, Lord God. You said you will never leave them nor forsake them. 
He said, Lord, you will make a way of escape for them, O oh God. And so this morning, those, oh Father, their hearts are broken. Father, those that are running because of persecution, those are, who are looking for a safe place, those that are homeless, those that are hungry, those that are fatherless, motherless, my God, remember them this morning. Even those this morning that are crying out, they say, Father, my child is gay. They say, Father, I'm crying out for help. Mighty God, they're looking to you for you to make a way, for you to bring change. They're looking to you, Almighty God, for you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. They're looking for you, Almighty God, to save their child, to save their children. Oh, Father, I pray for that gay person this morning, that homosexual person this morning. I pray, God, for that lesbian person this morning, the transvestite, Lord. I pray, mighty God, for those who are struggling within them right now, oh God, not knowing what to do, which way to go, Father. Mighty eternal God, I pray that you will touch them even this morning and bring peace and serenity, oh God, and guide them in the right way. Help them, almighty God, to understand your word, to understand that you love them, almighty God, but yet you want for them to live the right life, oh God. Yet you want for them, Lord God, to call upon you that you might change their tendency, that you, Almighty God, might bring healing, Father. This morning, as I touch this delicate subject, God of heaven, I pray that your power of might will go forth, Lord, in this airway, Almighty God, and that, Father, glory hmm. will be seen. I'm having trouble hearing you. Glory will be given, Almighty God. Oh, bless your name, Jesus, forevermore. Pull down every stronghold this morning, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stronghold be broken, Lord. Stronghold be pulled down, Lord. And your people will be set free. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory this morning. Have thine own way, sweet Jesus. Remember all the ministers of the gospel. Lord, I pray for my wife this morning. I pray for my children this morning. Lord, I pray for the church of the living God this morning. I pray, God, for the saints of God, mighty eternal God, let your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, give you glory. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I want to welcome you this morning to Sterling in the morning. Thank you for being here. God bless you. May this day be a blessed one for you. May this day be a fantastic day for you. I pray that God will favor you today and that you will be blessed. May you enjoy this program this morning in Jesus' name.
right, bless the Lord. Thank the Lord God. Hallelujah. Blessings unto you. How are you doing this morning? We're about to talk about some a delicate topic this morning. And uh, listen, invite those ever, those who you can uh, get a hold of to come on in, to come on over, and let's talk about this topic. Pastor, pray for my child. Pray for me. Pray for us, Pastor. My my child is gay. My my daughter is gay. My son uh, is gay. I don't know what to do, Pastor. I never grew them up this way. I didn't expect that this would happen. I, I, I didn't see this coming, Pastor. I did all that I could do for them. And now that my child has come out and tell me that he or she is gay, uh, what must I do now? I don't know what to do, Pastor. I don't know which way to turn. I don't know how to handle this. Uh, I want to play this song. I'm not sure if I'll be able to play it on uh, on Facebook without um, Facebook really um, muting it. But I'm going to take a chance and, and play this song. And uh, if uh, it's muted on Facebook, somebody might want to let me know. And... Um, a matter of fact, if it's muted, it will then the Facebook will then unmute or whatever. But I don't know. But uh, let's let's see what happens here, okay? Because uh, it's important for us to have this discussion today. It is important for us to look into this discussion today. Uh, there are social media platforms that will flag you if you are giving um, false information, uh, if you are giving information that they uh, believe is not accurate. And so this morning, I don't want to say I'm going to tread lightly, but I'm going to tread accurately. Hello, somebody. I'm not going to tread lightly, but I'm going to tread accurately. I'm going to go right to the point, and I'm going to talk about things that the, 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 the ministers are not willing to talk about even in public. Um, so we're going to talk about a very delicate subject today, and I pray that you will stick around and 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 uh enjoy once again like i say i'm about to play a song by sinash i know who i am i'm not sure how facebook is going to handle it if facebook is going to mute it or not because of the copyright but nevertheless i'm going to play it anyway and if facebook mute it uh eventually they will unmute the the program and so if you're on facebook and the song is muted just uh uh, relate that to me text me and let me know and uh, if I have to restart Facebook then I'll restart um, Facebook um, broadcast all right thank you so much
Once again, once again, welcome, welcome to Sterling in the morning. <clears throat> not sure, not sure, not sure, not sure how Facebook handled that song just now, but somebody let me know. My child is gay. Pastor, my child is gay. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for us. Pray for my child. I didn't raise my child this way. How did this happen? How did this happen? What happened, Pastor? Where did I go wrong, Pastor? Why is it that my child has turned out to be 
who he or she say they are. Pastor, help me out this morning. How can I correct this? How can I get a hold of this? What can I do? What should I do? I don't know if after this subject here this morning, I will be targeted or not by the gay and lesbian community, but that's all right. I'm only here to do what the Lord has bid me to do. It's not about you. It's not about me, but it's about God being glorified. And we're going to approach this from the scripture. <clears throat> so first, let us declare from the scripture what the God of our salvation is saying. What is it that the God of our salvation is saying? And uh, I want to get on an, as much platform as possible this morning so bear with me i want to see if i can key up my instagram platform i want to go live on instagram i want to see if i'm able to um relate this subject this morning in a very intricate unique manner and so i want to take the time to get on these various different platforms and uh, want to see how best I can get my broadcast out there so that the world might know the truth and so that the world might understand. And someone who might be fighting within themselves, within their lives for a long time, maybe this morning, maybe today, you might get an answer I'm not sure how you will receive this. I'm not sure which direction this program will go this morning. But I'm really here looking to put the subject out there and hope that you will be receptible to it. Glory be to God. How everyone doing this morning? May the love of God reach you. May the grace of God favor you this morning. Praise be the name of the Lord. I'm not liking how I'm looking on the Instagram page right now, but nevertheless, let me move on with the subject this morning. And we're going to go to the Word of God first. We want to declare the Word of God. And like I say, this is a very delicate um, topic and I don't know if you can call in and you might have some input here to share 516-255-6747 it's sterling in the morning 516-255-6747 I am trying to get set up here on Instagram maybe I might just um, leave Instagram alone for now and uh, let us let me see what I can get going here. And I'm really, really trying to connect here on Instagram. And I hope that I will be able to, to do so somewhat. All right. So, <clears throat> nevertheless, let us look at some of the scripture. All right. Uh, the first uh, of two scriptures that I, I want to bring <clears throat> to light is... Colossians uh, 3, Colossians chapter 3, and we want to look at, uh, and I want to declare this, all right? <coughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Give you some time to get to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Um... I'm not basically using my original study Bible right here with me. That will give me a lot of references. However, I'm just going to go to the basic uh, scripture that declare to us the word of God. And if you're a child of God, you are obligated to be in compliance 
with the word of God. You're obligated to walk in obedience to the word of God. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. And let's look at the verse 5. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. For those who have their Bibles with them, those who can tune in with me. Colossians chapter 3 and let's start with verse 5. Now we are looking from the perspective of a child of God. We're not looking at the, from the perspective of an unsaved person, but we are looking from the perspective of a child of God, from the context of being a child of God, from the context of being a believer, from the context of being a, a convert. So we are looking at the Word of God from this con uh, um, uh, context. We're looking at it from this context. So let us... Uh, let us start a little higher in the verse or in the scripture rather let us start a little higher in the scripture so let us start from uh verse one colossians chapter three and somebody bear with me follow along with me for the word of god reading from king's james version we are reading from the king's james version and it says if you th then be ri risen with christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So we know where Christ is right now. Christ is at the right hand of God. Then it said, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So when it's saying set your affection, set your mind, set your thoughts. Let your desire be towards the things of God. That's basically what the scripture here is saying. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your heart, your mind, your thoughts. Let it be uh, reflecting, thinking about, meditating about the things that are above, referring to the glorious kingdom of God and not on the things on the earth referring to material things such as lust of the eyes pride of life and the lust of the flesh set not your your heart your thoughts on your possessions and this is what really the scripture here is saying for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in Jesus, in God. Now, why would the apostle use the word dead right here? For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. The apostle used the word dead right here to show you that when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, though you were dead in sin and trespasses, now that you or with Christ Jesus, your life is now transformed and you are now living in Christ Jesus. For you are dead. So it's saying that you are now dead to sin and not no longer dead in sin. And that's what the apostle is relating to you today. That you are now dead to sin and not dead in sin and so there's a difference and that's what the apostle is teaching here and saying to us today that you who have come to christ jesus you who have given your heart you have received baptism you have been converted and now you are living in the kingdom of god and your life is hid with christ in god so you are now living in christ jesus living in Christ Jesus righteousness living in the grace of God and when you live in the grace of God you're living in Christ Jesus which is a spiritual transformation and not as physical I say that again it is a spiritual transformation it is a spiritual living 
and not so much a physical transformation or a physical change. Now, when the spiritual is changed, the spiritual will then uh, manifest in the physical. I say that again. When the spiritual part of you is converted, is changed, is living differently, it will now be manifested in the physical realm, such as in your dressing, your talking, your walking, the activities that you do. The spiritual being, the spiritual righteousness of Christ is now manifest in the physical realm of your life. And that's what the scripture is talking about. When Christ, who is our life, now, who is your life? Christ. Who is your life? Christ. Who is your life? Christ. Galatians says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, the life that I now live, I live not of myself. So when Christ, who is your life, our life, my life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Telling you that you shall have a glorious place with Christ. When Christ appears in glory, referring to his second coming, referring to him coming back to the earth, and to, re, and, to, and to gather his people, his children unto him. You will be a part of that glory. When Christ shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. Which meaning that you will caught up to meet him. You will be with Christ in glory when he shall appear. And so the scripture said, beloved, beloved. Okay? Yet it does not appear what we shall be like but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him all right now verse 5 which is the meat of our text here this morning colossians 3 we are talking from colossians 3 chapter 3 now we are at verse 5 it says mortify which means to uh, some form of edifying or uh, some form of edit editing Mortifying meaning some form of what? Editing. Mortifying meaning bring under control. Mortifying meaning take control. Mortify means to, to adjust. Mortify means to, to make some adjustment. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, your members which are upon the earth, the, 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 the different parts of your body, members here not referring to the people in the church or in the congregation but referring to who you as an individual with different members of your bodies your eyes your ears your nose your mouth your hands your feet mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth you are living upon the earth you are walking upon the earth you are in the the world but not of the world meaning that you are living in the world but you are not living according to the world you are living according to god's law or god's commandment and so the apostles started to uh specifically outline various activities <clears throat> various activity that the the body itself engages in the body itself engages in these activities in one way or another. The members of the body are used to engage in these various activities. So once again, you are saying, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for my child. My child is gay. And so we are addressing this now. And we are using the scripture. So we are addressing this from the context of a script scriptural perspective. We are addressing this from the context of a godly uh, um, explanation. For a godly exegesis. From a godly uh, interpretation. So we are, uh, we are uh, looking at it from this context. And I glorify God and I thank God for you being here. It's sterling in the morning. 
It's 516-255-6747 to reach me here. Somebody spread the love. Somebody spread the word. Tweet somebody. Email somebody. Text somebody. Tango somebody. Instant message somebody. All right? Um, send the word out there. All right? Telegram somebody. Okay? And let them know what's going on here. Now, the apostle outlined various different activities. And these activities or activities of the flesh activities of the flesh the body is used to carry on and to carry out these activities and these activities are considered to be unholy fornication so the first thing that the apostle would outline is fornication fornication referring to two people having sexual activities and they are not married that's fornication uncleanness uncleanness being unclean being untidy okay eating unclean meat engaging in unclean behavior not cleaning your body not taking care of your your body but your your body is 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 dirty it's unclean um okay let's move on inordinate affection inordinate affection having affection for 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 animals affection for um beast affection for a lot of other things that are really not um pertaining to uh godly affection affection for um for things that are not godly so let's let's leave it there and let's make it simple not to complicate things inordinate affection all right Aff uh, you have an even affection for um meat that are even offer to sacrifice and all of these things you're having some kind of love for these um, ungodly things evil uh concupiscence okay uh evil 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 thoughts evil evil mindedness okay using the mind uh, and covetousness uh coveting the other person for what they have okay um idolatry idolatry participating in worshiping of idols sacrificing things to idols okay idolatry burning incense to idols burning incense upon altars of baal upon altars that are pertaining to gods idolatry praying to gods praying to statues idolatry when you are praying to statues when you are uh praying to uh inanimate objects and when you are um praying to to uh animals or to tree or or, or stuff like that idolatry engaging in idolatry um verse 6 for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience so all those things that if you are practicing if you are part of those things uh then you are being disobedient unto god and you are accessible to the wrath of god you are opening up you are opening up yourself to receive the wrath of god and mind you god is merciful his grace is sufficient yes so even in his wrath he will show mercy especially to those who repent so here it is you are accessible you are making yourself vulnerable to the wrath of god and so the wrath of god come cometh upon children of disobedience and so in verse 7 in the which you at one time walk sometime when you lived in them that mean when you were living in sin you were doing these things you were enjoying these things you are participating in these things so you as a child of god now that you have received conversion now that you have changed your life now that you have been changed through the power of jesus christ you have received this transformation you are now not uh walking in them so that's why the apostle says that you once walk in them and therefore you should not be condemning other people judging other people but you need to be praying that other people will come out just like you did colossians 3 verse 8 colossians 3 verse 8 and now it continues to say but now you also put on put off all these things 
and it and and the apostle begins to name some things that you must put off and things that you have put off and things that you must uh, keep off anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing that you have put off the old man which is deed the old man which is deed the old man referring to when you are living in sin you are slave to sin you are slave to fear you are slave to the devil the devil was your master <clears throat> you were a slave to uh do what the devil wants you to do and so you are doing the deeds you are committing these sinful deeds because you are living in that lifestyle you had the old man and his deeds which is fornication uncleanness inordinate effect and those are the things that the bible is talking about that you are living in and therefore the bible is now telling you that when you have uh, you are converted you have put off the old man and all those activities that you used to do you are not to be doing those activities because you have put off that uh type of lifestyle you have stopped those things and uh, now you have the knowledge of Jesus Christ and have put on the new man. When it says you have put on the new man, you have now put on Christ Jesus, which is uh, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created you. So this is happening in a spiritual realm. All right. So now I've declared myself that <clears throat> the things that are mentioned here and the one thing that we need to uh, pay attention to is where it talks about um, inordinate affection, inordinate affection, inordinate affection. And that's leading to what we are talking about here. When it talks about inordinate affection, having affection, having love, having lust for things that are not godly, having lust for a man, lust for a woman, a woman to a woman, a man to a man, and all of that inordinate affection bestiality having love for beasts you want to lay with the beast you want to sleep with bees some of you you love your dog you love your cat you love all these animals and you want to sleep with these animals and have sexual activity with these animals the word of god is saying that it is wrong it is not to be so and you open yourself for the wrath of god to come upon you now let us look at a more intricate scripture which is romans 1 from verse 26 to 35 to 32 let's look at Romans and we are going to address this scripture in its context in its in its uh <clears throat> in its entirety now all right Romans 1 from verse 26 to 32 now Romans 1 verse 26 as I declare so I want to set the stage once again so you can understand <clears throat> where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about here this morning Romans 1 and verse 26 says for this cause God gave them up unto vile affection for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature this is what God is saying here this is what God is saying here and he is the creator God is the creator God is the sustainer God is the one that laid down his laws his commandments and Romans 1 and verse 26 says this for this cause <clears throat> gave them up unto vile affection saying that God has gave them up unto vile affection because of the upper verse so when we talk about the let's look at the upper verses if we look at the upper verses like from verse 23 come on down real quick all right um, and change the glory of the uh, uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves there you go talking about what dishonoring their own bodies between themselves so they are using their bodies to do a lot of these things that are unholy uh, to do a lot of these things that 
is really and truly against God. So Romans 1 and verse uh, 23, setting the stage, verse 24, giving you more specific thoughts that God gave them up, up in verse 25 now. Uh, let's look at this. Where, uh, who changed the truth of God into a lie, which a lot of people are doing today. A lot of men are doing today to support what they are doing, changing the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the create the cre the what the creature more than the creator so they are serving the creature which is man more than the creator which is god who is blessed forever god is blessed forever and not the creature and so the word of god says that god himself gave them up onto their vile affection meaning that god withdrew himself and say hey this is what you want to do. This is the, the things that you are affectionate about. Okay, I'm going to withdraw myself and I'm going to let you go ahead and do what you want to do. Because I know, I God, I will destroy this thing that you are doing. For even their woman, and so the apostle now begins to give you more specific thoughts about it. That even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. What does that mean? This means that women begin to do things with other women. Women begin to do things with beasts. Women begin to do things with objects. Women begin to do things to please themselves in many different ways. And so the Bible is saying that we are not to be like this. All right. Verse 27. And likewise also the men... So now that the Bible addressed the woman, the Bible is now addressing the man. After the Bible addressed the woman, the Bible is now addressing the man. Likewise, also, the man, leaving the natural use of a woman, the man don't want to bother with a woman anymore. He don't need to use a woman anymore. He don't want to use a woman anymore. He have leaving the, the natural use of the woman burning in their lust one towards another burning lusting one towards another right man lusting after man men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat you see that brethren so the word of god addresses a lot of these things that we see going on today. The Word of God addressed a lot of these things that we see today. And as we are looking at, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for my child. My child is gay. We now have gay parents raising children. We have gay parents raising children. Two men, two men raising children. Two women raising children. And in America and many other parts of the world, this is what they are calling normal. But God is rejecting all of this. God is rejecting that type of law. That law is a law of man. And that's not the law of God. And that's why in the upper verses it says that God has done what? What did God do? God gave them up unto their vile affection. And therefore they move forward and introduce laws that will govern them in this way giving them the right to marry one another in whatever form they decide to do and that is what god is talking about here in his word now is it that god agree with what they are doing or what they have done is it that god agree with your child who is now say mommy i am gay daddy i am gay this is who i am and i am telling you this is and you says but i didn't raise you that way and some people will try to say that people were born that way so let's look at the truth yes someone might have been born with affectionate um tendency and the bible addressed that also and tells us that people who are feminine uh, uh, i i need to find that scripture also 
um, forgive me, but I need to find that scripture. People who have these feminine um, ability, um, tendency, a man who is um, exercising femininity, the Bible talks about that also. So the Bible don't leave no stones unturned. So the scripture talks about that too. Men who have this tendency to be on the feminine side. The Bible addresses that. And the Bible tells us that people like those, if they don't change, if they don't repent, if they don't turn from these kinds of ways, they will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. That's not my word. That's the word of God. It is not saying that God don't love you. It is not saying that God don't love your child. And the Bible doesn't support you for not loving your child. The Bible does not support you for putting your child out the house because your child is gay. Now, if the child is 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 um bringing the the gay activities in your house, that's a different story. If the if if your child is participating in gay activities in your house, that's a different story. If your child is a transvestite and your child is now beginning to practice wearing uh it's a boy and 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 he is wearing dress it's a girl and she begins to wear men clothes and all of these things now that's that's a lifestyle that they now begin to practice and to do they don't have no right doing that in your house so you have to make a a a a, a, a conscious decision if you're going to support that or if you're going to reject that your child being gay your child being transvestite, your child being a homosexual, and all of that is your child. You will love that child. Don't you dare hate that child. Don't you dare turn your back against that child. But if that child decides to practice the activity, no. You have to step in and make a conscious decision that they cannot practice it in your home, especially if you're a child of God, and this is what the Bible teach against. Now, here, let's be careful now. Let's be careful here. Because depending on what the child is doing in your house. Because if you have a child who is fornicating, why would you allow your child to fornicate in your house? And you don't say, okay, you got to stop. Or you don't say, okay, I got to put you out because you are fornicating. You are living in a, a, a lifestyle that is not according to the word of God. So now you got to make a conscious decision. If you can put the, de the gay child out, why aren't you putting the child who is committing fornication out? You are a hypocrite and the truth is not in you and the love of God is not in you. And so therefore, sin is sin. And when a person decides to live in sin, you have to make a conscious decision or you are going to allow this type of lifestyle in your house or is it you are going to stand upon the principles of god and let the child know when you are of age if you leave my house when you are of age and you want to live the kind of life you want to live then so be it you live the life you want to live when you leave my house but as long as i'm a man of god as long as i'm a woman of god as long as i'm a minister and you live under my roof you will live according to the rules of this house of course they are going to sneak they are going to when sneak around when you go to work they are going to maybe leave the house and go do what they got to do that's okay that's on them that is not on you but if you find out that this child, this son of yours, this daughter of yours is practicing lesbianism, homosexuality inside your house. You have a right to put your foot down. If you find out that your child is a prostitute, your child is fornicating, your child is living an unholy life in your house. You have the right to put your foot down. You have the right to teach them the word of God. And that is your right. But you should not throw them out of your house. Now, many people back in olden days will do that. Even if their daughter get pregnant. Remember those days when you yourself got pregnant and your parent put you out of the house because you were a teenager. That was not right. Remember in the church, they put you in the back bench. Remember in the church, they even run you away from the church because you got pregnant out of wedlock. That is not right. 
The Bible does not support those things. The Bible supports us loving and forgiving each other, embracing each other, correcting each other, yes. But we must do it in humility, in sincerity. If a child is being reprimanded, a child is being corrected, the child needs to accept the correction. The child needs to accept that the mother or the father love them. And so, when we say that, yes, the person might be born with it, of course, many boys are born with homosexual tendency. Many girls are born with homosexual tendency. But the behavior is learned. The, 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 the one that you feed the most is the one that's going to grow strong. So, if you feed the homosexual tendency, that's what's going to grow strong in you. A boy can be on the feminine side, but he is not feeding the femininity that is in him. He is feeding the masculinity that is in him. He tried to tap into the side of his masculinity and let that grow. And if you're a child of God and you're listening to me today, you need to understand that, yes, it's okay. You might have a little femininity inside of you, but that doesn't mean that defines you or that depicts who you are. You are a child of God and you need to live according to the words of God. If you decide to let that femininity grow inside of you and develop inside of you and be manifested in, um, in the public, be manifested in the physical realm, that is on you because God is not going to be pleased with you. And you won't have a part in the kingdom of heaven. You will not. That's the word of God. That's not my words. Somebody might say, Pastor, show me the, the proof. Show me what you're talking about. Well, all right. Let me see if I can find that scripture and uh, bring it up to you right after this song right here. It's Sterling in the morning. Thank you for being here. I'll be right back right after this. Interested in becoming a chaplain, getting married, dedicate your child, or spiritual and basic counseling? Call Shepherd Dr. Sterling B. 866-496-6167. He can help you. Text 917-455-3072. For your vitamin needs and basic home and health care needs, call Sterling B. Worldwide, 888-381-6675. I went to visit.
Yes, we'll never fail. We will never fail. Just worship. I just love that song. I love that song. I love that song. Really, really, truly a blessing right here. Thank you for being here. It's Sterling in the morning, and I sincerely do um, welcome you this morning. Thank you for being here, and I pray that your morning will be a blessed one, a, a fantastic one, and a beautiful one. And I pray that you are enjoying yourself so far and you are enjoying what we are here talking about. Um, it is uh, a time where we uh, need to understand that yes, we are created in the image of God, but uh, we are living in a time and an age where a lot of things are being said and a lot of things are going around and a lot of things are being thrown around. Um, and so, you know, it is for us as women of God, men of God, to really uh, explicitly let people know that God does not support uh, what we call homosexuality behaviors, but God love the person, the God love the person. And loving the person doesn't mean that he love the behavior or the activity. God love you as a person. And even God love you as a sinner. <clears throat> and so, if you're an adulteress and an adulterer, if you're a fornicator, if you're a liar, if you're a whatever it is, <clears throat> God loves you. Even though you have these behaviors and these tendencies. If, if you are a gay and lesbian. If you are a transvestite or whatever. It doesn't matter what you are. God loves you. Make no mistakes about it. God loves you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. Because you are his creation. But he will not love the sin that you are engaging in on a daily basis. Every day you are living in sin. God does not love that. So it's not necessarily you. And so don't get it twisted and don't make that mistake that for any time believing that God don't love you. God loves you because God is love, of course. 
God loves the sinner, but he doesn't love the sin. God does not love evil. God destroys evil. And that's why God converts sinners. That's why sinners do not live in uh, sinners do not live in righteousness, but they live in sin. Sinners do not live in righteousness, and sinners do not practice righteousness, but they practice sin. And it doesn't matter what you are. You could be rich, you could be poor, you could be black, you could be white, you could be homo, you could be jomo, you could be beso. You, it doesn't matter what you are. God loves you, but he does not love the activities or the sin that you live in. And God loves righteousness. And that's why God is calling you unto righteousness. Now, why did I say that? Of course, I am right. I am right. Why am I right? Okay, well, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and verses 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Now, I, I did not even go into the explanation of certain things, but we are going to go into that in the second half. We are going to go into that. So let's look at 1 Corinthians uh, 6 verses 9. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 10. Let's get there. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 10. What is it saying here, Lord? Help me today. All right. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What is it saying? On righteous how are you unrighteous unrighteous mean that you are practicing sin and that's why the scripture says how be it that you that are dead to sin live therein any longer once you come to christ and jesus christ has converted you and made you a new creature you cannot any longer live in sin and don't bring to me no foolishness but grace don't bring no foolishness to me about, oh, grace, grace, grace. Oh, pastor, we are not under the law, but we are under grace and grace, grace. Not because there is grace, that doesn't mean that you're going to continue to live in sin. Hello? Can I put it straight? Can I put it where the goats can get it? Can I put it to you? Not because God has blessed you with grace. God has favored you with grace. That means you have an excuse to continue to live in sin. God forbid. The word of God says what? God forbid. Where sin is, grace much more abound. Of course. But if you don't repent, if you do not ask God to forgive you, what sense do you have grace? Grace is plentiful. Mercy there was great. Mercy there was great. Plenty of mercy. There was mercy there. But grace was free. Grace is free, but you will not receive God's grace until you repent. You will not receive God's grace, grace until you tell God you are sorry for all the things you have done, all the sinfulness that you have been committing and practicing. God's grace is going to cover you, of course, but you will not receive it until you repent. So I don't care who you are. I don't care what you, what you want to teach. I don't care what you want to preach. You cannot tell people because of God's grace they can continue to live in sin because God has forgiven them already of those sins. Of course, yes. There's a certain degree to that. And let us not get it twisted. God has forgiven you of your sin. He knows that you're going to sin today. He knows you're going to sin tomorrow. And forgiveness is there waiting for you. But if you don't ask for the forgiveness, you're not going to receive it. And that's what you fail to tell people. Yes, God has forgiven you of the sin you're about to commit. But that forgiveness is not activated until you ask God to forgive you. So God is not going to just automatically forgive you because, oh, you're baptized, oh, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, oh, you're speaking in tongues, oh, you're performing miracles, oh, you're performing healing, oh, you're doing this and you do. And so God is going to automatically forgive you. Are you kidding me? If you don't ask God to forgive you, you will not forgive. And a matter of fact, even if you don't forgive your fellow men, you will not even get forgiveness when you pray. 
You can be asking God, God forgive me of all my sins and you have heart against your brother and sister. You have not forgiven your brother that hurt you. You have not forgiven your sister that hurt you. You have not forgiven that man who borrowed your $5,000 and haven't given back to you as yet. You have not forgiven them and you are asking God to forgive you. Brother, sister, your prayer is in vain. So here, the word of God is declaring right now today to us, know you not, understand this, that no unrighteousness shall inherit the kingdom of God. And we're talking about you are living now in the kingdom of God. So therefore, if you are living in unrighteousness, you cannot live in the kingdom of God. If you let, 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 let's declare and let's be plain and let's be simple. Can I speak the truth? Can I put it where the goats can get it? If you have been baptized and you are still living in sin, you are not living in the kingdom of God. You are just baptized and that's it. The baptism ain't doing nothing for you. You think that because you're baptized and you think that because um, the pastor baptized you in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yahshua, whatever name the pastor might use. You think that because you are baptized, now you are just ready to, 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 to just what? Do what you want to do? Live any way you want to live? And because you are baptized, you are in the kingdom of God? No, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't work that way. To live in the kingdom of God is to obey God. That's plain and simple. That's all it is. To live in the kingdom of God is to obey God's word. To live in the kingdom of God is to do God's will. That's how you live in the kingdom of God. There's no other way. There's no two ways about it. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. And say you're living in the kingdom of God. It doesn't work that way. You cannot be stealing from the offering plate and say you are living in the kingdom of God. It doesn't work that way. If you sin from time to time, that's different. If you sin from time to time because of the flesh, that's different. But you got to know when you sin, there's an advocate. You pray and you ask for forgiveness. No matter how many times you sin, that's living in the kingdom of God. Living in the kingdom of God doesn't mean that you personally, you are perfect. You are, there's no unrighteousness in you. It means that you are living in Christ Jesus. To live in the kingdom of God is to live in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. That's basically what living in the kingdom of God is. Living under the grace of God is to live in the kingdom of God because his grace is going to cover your sin. His grace is going to forgive you of your sin when you ask of him. All right, with that said, let's move on. Be not deceived. In other words, don't be fooled. Many have come and deceived you. Many have come and taught you some stuff that if you listen to them, you feel that you are all right. But the Bible says that neither fornicators, come on somebody. Last week you were in church with your girlfriend. You didn't, you know, engage. You know, plan to marry. You don't plan to engage. All it is, this is your girlfriend. This is your girlfriend for the time being. You take Holy Communion last week. This is your girlfriend for the time being. You come to Christmas service, this is your girlfriend. You come to Easter service, this is your girlfriend. After church, you're going home back and you're going to shack up. You're living in fornication. You're a fornicator. The Bible says that you cannot live in the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God if you're a fornicator, nor idolater. If you're worshiping idols, praying to idols, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is the word of God. You who are an adulterer, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor effeminate. That's where we're talking about now, what it is to be effeminate. This is what we're talking about. Man having feminine tendencies, nor effeminate. Man having what? Woman-like tendencies, living like a woman. Talking like a woman, walking like a woman, wearing a woman dress, living like a woman, effeminate. 
abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusers of themselves with mankind. Lord have mercy. No thief. No covetousness. No drunkard. Look. No rivalry. No extortioner. No inheritance. Listen, brethren, when you get a chance, go and visit the scripture again. This is not me. This is the word of God. Putting it right where the goats can get it. Shall inherit. None of you shall inherit the kingdom of God that practices these things. And it doesn't matter how much you want to talk about the law, how much you want to talk about grace, grace, grace. You cannot receive the love of God until you repent. And no child of God can live this way and expect to be in the kingdom of God. It is not possible, my brother. It is not possible, my sister. You are deceived. You are fooling yourself. <clears throat> that gay man, that lesbian woman that you have on the choir, and you say, God love them. Yes, God love them. But if they are practicing the lifestyle, they are in jeopardy of their soul. Tell it like it is. If you are a fornicator and you are on that choir and you will continue to live in fornication, you're not making that effort to marry that man, to marry that woman. You're not making the effort to stop your fornication. You're singing in the choir. You're reading the scripture in church. You will not make it in the kingdom of God. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the word of God. That's not my word. If you are an adulterer, ministers, who are practicing adultery. You have your wife, but you're still practicing adultery because you are messing with other women. You are going around and sleeping with other women. You're going around having sexual be intercourse with other women. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the word of God. If you don't repent, if you don't repent, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you're a liar, it go. I mean, this is not my word. This is the word of God. So someone said, Pastor, I am born with it. Pastor, I am born. We all are conceived in sin. We are all born with a sinful body. Whether you are a gay, lesbian, homosexual, whatever, bestiality, sinner, fornicator, liar, adulterer, covetous, whatever, we are all born with sin. Hello, somebody. So when you tell me, say, me born a lesbian, I me born gay, I me born this, I me born, yes, you were born with it. But that doesn't mean that you are going to continue. It means that you have an advocate who is Christ Jesus. He can change you. He can take that away from you. The one that you feed the most is the one that's going to become dominant. There are two spirits living inside of all of us. The spirit of God. And the spirit of devil. The spirit of lust. And the spirit of righteousness. Living inside of us. And the one that you feed the most. Is the one that's going to become dominant. Lord have mercy. I'm running out of time here. <coughs> Excuse me ladies and gentlemen. Let me calm down. Take it easy. Yes. You are gay. Yes. You have homosexual tendency. <clears throat> yes. You are born with femininity. What is it that we are not born with? You tell me, what is it we are not born with? But we develop. We evolve. We adapt. We survive. We learn. So if it's a biological thing... <clears throat> If you can graft trees, look at the technology that we have today. Look at what man has done. Men are now putting out there, some of you passing this foolishness around. How can you be a man of God and you're passing this foolishness around? Man, being, man having babies now, men pregnant. 
they 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 they, they showing you now men are being um what do you need carrying a a, a a a a baby fetus or something like that to give birth this is the technology that man is trying to push now and many of you are buying into it being deceived the devil is a lie and the truth is not in him anyway um let me wrap it up just about now thank you for being here god bless you god bless you if you're born with homosexual tendency that doesn't mean that you are going to be an homosexual you can fight it god can heal you from it god can cleanse you from it born with homosexual tendency is like a man who has fornication tendency it's like a man or a woman or boy or girl who practices lie all the time born in with having a little femininity inside of you that's that that's that's given that's still no reason you can fight it and like we fight everything and most things in life life is a, is a journey and it's a fight if you don't want to live in sin you gotta fight not to live in sin you gotta embrace the things of God listen brothers and sisters just like you practice to run and to win a race it's the same thing you practice righteousness and you reject the lust of the flesh you reject the tendency to live in sin that's what it is all about so the excuse of i born with it pastor and I, there's nothing i can do about it that's a lie that's a lie you can do something about it if men have the technology to do what they are doing today why aren't you trying to live different or do different or be different if you don't love women that's okay it's not a sin for you not to love women it's not a sin for you not to love men it's not a sin the sin is when you begin to exercise and practice certain behavior that are not according to the words of god that's where the sin is 516 255 six seven four seven i like how y'all quiet you know i like how y'all quiet man but it's a matter of time somebody's gonna call me one of these days five one six two five five six seven forty seven somebody gonna call me one of these days I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Sterling in the morning. We bless God for you. Thank you for being here. Once again, you can catch the show each and every morning, Monday through Friday. Y'all pray for me, man. It's not easy getting up this early, you know. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, I'm glad that you are here. Thank you, those of you on YouTube, for locking it in. Thank you so much, Miss. Uh, Miss V for being there. Thank you so much, Sister Ryan, for locking it in this morning, and many others of you. Thank you on Sterling B. Wawa Radio for locking it in. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember, remember you can find me on iHeartRadio. If you have a device, Alexa device, Amazon.com, get uh, an Alexa device and enable Sterling B. Worldwide Radio. All right? And so 
listen pastor pray for me my child is gay pastor i don't understand i didn't raise my child this way why is that my child turned out to be gay should i continue to love this child should i continue to have this child live in my house what should i do pastor <clears throat> you know should i um you know um turn my back on this child because i'm a christian i'm a child of god and now my my child is is gay and i i i i don't know what to do pastor you know some children when they go off to college some children when they are in high school they are exposed to gay and lesbianism they are influenced by their friend they are influenced by someone who's smarter than them wiser than them and while you have been raising your child up until the age of where they are 15 16 you know that you have done your best but now that they are approaching adulthood they begin to be exposed to other things exposed to other people and then they are influenced and that is why it is important <clears throat> for the churches the ministers to make it their point of duty to not just preach oh gay is wrong homosexuality is wrong don't just preach that why don't you preach how damaging that lifestyle is don't just tell them that, oh, um, fornication is wrong, uh, um, stealing is wrong. Why don't we begin to teach them and show them the consequences of these behaviors and these things that they want to engage in? Smoking is wrong, using drugs and alcohol. They know it is wrong. They know that. What they don't know is the damage that it will do to them or to their lives. Somebody saying, well, Pastor, are you saying me being gay is damaging to my life? Or me being um, an homosexual is damaging to me? That's, that's, you know, how is that damaging to me? How am I going to, you know, be, be damaged because of, of this? Well, they are about, what is it, 10 anti-gay myth, mythologies or myth. And living a homosexual lifestyle, living in sin, how beneficial is all that to you? How much are you benefiting? You're living your lifestyle. You're enjoying your life. You're doing what you want to do. And I guess you can say, Pastor, I understand what you're saying, but I'm happy. I'm happy anyway. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, if any of us wants to have eternal life, if any of us wants to live with Christ Jesus, we know that we have to put off the old man and his deed. We have to do what? Put off the old man and his deed. We cannot live in sin and expect to be inheriting the kingdom of God. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, there, there, there might be a lot of things that can be said and has said about people that are practicing homosexuality behavior. We see in the Bible where Lot was living in a land where there were, a, a matter of fact, homosexuality, the law of the land. And Lot, as a heterosexual man, 
has a heterosexual family and they were living amongst the homosexuals just like you and I today. We are heterosexual but we are living amongst those who are homosexual. And sometimes we develop some what we call false assumptions. Sometimes we develop some things that are called myth. You know? And we run with it. Like even what's happening right now with the monkey pox. We find out that the monkey pox is affecting mostly the gay men. And I don't know if it's gay women, they don't, they, I, get, I believe it's affecting the gay women, but the gay men more prevalent than any other population right now. And we develop stigmas. We develop stereotypes from these things. One of them that many people develop was that gay men molest children at far more higher rate than heterosexual, and that's not necessarily true. That's not so. That's not so. You see, um, we see where a lot of the priests have been molesting a lot of the, um, the young men. We see all this happening. Th those priests are not necessarily um, gay. They sworn to celibacy, but they still molest the children, the young men. And I'm quite sure that there are priests that even mess with the young girls as well. <clears throat> or even the sisters in the church. There are priests who have done that. So, hey, they are human too, as much as they try. Um, some people will believe that same-sex parents might harm children. Okay, we have same-sex couple that are raising children right now. We don't have much facts about that if they are really harming the children that they are raising. But not because they are doing this, that doesn't mean that it is right. It is not right in the sight of God. For them to be living this kind of lifestyle and yet they are okay they are raising children hey what can i tell you you know um it's what it is today i've got to stop here because i gotta go but i pray that the rest of your day will be a fantastic one a blessed one thank you for being here thank you for locking it in maybe we can continue this conversation tomorrow if you wish for me to continue this conversation tomorrow send me a text let me know all right i gotta go but sincerely do appreciate you. If I should continue this subject tomorrow, drop me a text. Just let me know so that I can continue, bring to you some more facts. And, you know, it, it, it's going to be a good, good day tomorrow. God bless you all. It's going to be a good day tomorrow. It's expected to rain, but it's still going to be a great day. All right. Um, we, were, we, were, we are looking at some myth. Um, some false um, concepts of homosexuality and, and so forth. And we can continue it tomorrow, but simply drop me a text and let me know if you want to continue this tomorrow. Pastor, pray for me. My child is gay. Pastor, pray for me. My child is an homosexual. What shall I do, Pastor? How did this happen? Many of you raise your child from conception all the way up to a tender age only to find out that you are a believer in the word of God and your child now is on the other side wanting to be a homosexual. Very devastating, very hard, but you still got to love the child. You still got to love the child. You still got to be there for the child. You still got to be there. All right. Oh, God bless you. Thank you all for being here. Hopefully we can come back and do it again tomorrow. But I got to go and may God continue to rain down his blessings upon you. All right? Bless the name of Jesus.